This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. At the very beginning of this program, I'd like to offer you a free booklet, our newest free booklet, The Rise and Fall of Germany and Europe. And I would recommend that you ask for a free copy today. Because today I'd like to talk about the rise and fall of Germany and Europe insofar as Ukraine is concerned. And some allegations were made recently by the Wall Street Journal blaming Angela Merkel mainly for the war. I'd like to read to you from Ukraine Today, which wrote on May 26. German society is rethinking Merkel's 16-year rule, which seemed like a golden age, but led to a nightmarish war. In April this year, Angela Merkel received the Grand Cross of the Order of Merit for Germany, the country's highest honor, previously awarded only to the first post-war Chancellor, Konrad Adenauer, and to the uniting Chancellor of East and West Germany, Helmut Kohl. Especially in the context of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the Wall Street Journal writes, Merkel was a key architect of the agreements that made the economy of Germany and its neighbors dependent on energy imports from Russia. Putin's invasion of Ukraine destroyed this strategic partnership, forcing Germany to look elsewhere for oil and natural gas at a huge cost to businesses, government and households, notes the publication. During the years of her rule, Defense budgets were cut year after year. On the day of the Russian attack on Ukraine, the commander of the Bundeswehr said that the once powerful German army was now so weakened that it was no longer capable of repelling a Russian attack of this magnitude. Particularly outrageous for Germans today is the fact that after the Russian annexation of Crimea in 2014, Merkel not only did not refuse to buy energy from the Kremlin, but worked to double her gas imports from Russia. Many German pundits and even former Merkel allies now believe that this alone gave Vladimir Putin the courage to launch a new invasion eight years later. At an event last year, Merkel recalled that after the annexation of Crimea, Putin told her that he wanted to destroy the European Union. But she continued to promote plans to build the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline despite U.S. protests. The publication, the Wall Street Journal, states that after leaving the post of Chancellor, and the full-scale invasion of the Russian Federation into Ukraine, Merkel did not admit mistakes and did not apologize for them. Another strategic mistake Merkel is called by many is her decision to completely abandon nuclear energy, which has just happened in stages to this day. The decision made Germany even more dependent on Russian gas. It is Merkel who is considered to be the person who blocked the movement of Ukraine and Georgia to NATO membership in 2008. The Wall Street Journal notes that a number of experts are coming to exactly this conclusion. The failure of the West to draw red lines and continued economic operation and cooperation with Germany prompted Putin to launch a full-scale attack in 2022. In April, Angela Merkel gave an interview to German journalists, in which she again stated that she considers her policy towards Russia to be correct and does not see her guilt in the fact that this policy led Europe to the largest war since the Second World War. At the same time, Commenting on the realities of the 
internal agenda in Germany. Merkel lamented that the Germans today are more concerned about the war in Ukraine than climate protection issues. Now let me just say, I have felt for many years that Merkel had been completely overrated. And many in Germany should have seen what Merkel's political agenda was all about. But either they didn't see it, or they chose to ignore it. Also, that Merkel followed Germany's prior Chancellor Gerhard Schröder's unwise agenda towards Russia should have been noticed. And even today, Schröder is still a close friend of Mr. Putin. Now, to be fair, the war is not only Merkel's and Germany's fault. Many feel that Biden's weak leadership and his debacle in Afghanistan encouraged Putin as well. But the politic of appeasement regarding Russia is still continuing under Germany's new Chancellor Olaf Scholz. MSN published the following article on May 26. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has said that the weapons provided by Western countries to Ukraine must be used strictly on Ukrainian territory. When asked about the possibility of the hostilities moving to Russia, the heads of the Baltic states were less categorical than Scholz. The Estonian Prime Minister stressed that according to the UN Charter, every country has a right to defend itself the idea is no matter where. And this also means that Ukraine can use the weapons that have been given to them. The person said. The Latvian Prime Minister pointed out that it's very clear that Ukraine is in the business of defending its own country. And then the Lithuanian Prime Minister said that it's quite strange to think that the war can only be in that other territory that you invaded, there might be incidents that happen on your own territory, as a matter of fact. So in February, Olaf Scholz stated that there was a consensus with Ukrainian President Zelensky that weapons provided by the West would not be used to attack Russian territory. Now, let me just say, I find this to be an incredible joke. It's being propagated by a German chancellor who seems to be living in a dream world, in a fantasy world, completely and totally unrealistic. Of course, the Welt reported on May 30 that there were drone strikes in Moscow early Tuesday morning. Of course, these drone strikes, you have heard, were very close to Putin's domicile. Ukraine stressed that it had nothing directly to do with it. Now, who is supposed to believe that? Another joke. But it's a very sad joke. I'm not taking any position whether Ukraine should or shouldn't do what they are doing. I'm just talking about the facts involved here. Deutsche Welle wrote on May 31 about another joke, if you please. Zelensky has praised the determination of German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in providing aid to the war to the war-torn country. Zelensky, in his nightly video message, said he spoke to Scholz by phone and thanked him for providing air defense systems that were crucial in saving the lives of many Ukrainians from attacks by Russia. And I thank Olaf, Mr. Chancellor, for his personal determination, which in many ways becomes the determination for all of Europe. He continued in the video message. Procrastinating, hesitant, and ineffective Chancellor Scholz shows no determination at all. And to assign a leading role to him in Europe is a joke. In view of the dissatisfaction of many Germans with Scholz and his governing coalition, in view of the fact that more and more Germans are totally opposed now to sending any more weapons or money to Ukraine, Mr. Zelensky should be careful not to lose all sympathy in Germany. You see, Germany is now in a recession. 
And most Germans are blaming the German government for that, and especially Green Minister Habeck. And so things are not looking too good over there in Germany when it comes to the government, an ineffective chancellor, an ineffective coalition, but also when it comes to the economy. And people are saying it's getting worse by the hour, by the day, by the week, by the month. Things will change. People are looking for change. They are looking for a strong government. Because right now you don't have a strong government in Germany or anywhere else in Europe. But the Bible tells you that a strong government will develop in Europe. And it will be ten nations or groups of nations. And they will give their power and their authority to a very charismatic person called the beast in the Bible of German, perhaps Austrian descent. But he will start to create a totalitarian power block, which we haven't really seen in Europe for a long, long time. But this is going to happen. A reaction to what we are seeing in Germany in particular right now. And let me also say one more time, I've said it many times before, Ukraine will finally unite with Russia, however that's going to happen. And they will be opposed to Europe. They will be opposed to Germany. That is also very clearly prophesied. So let me again invite you to ask for our free booklets, The Rise and Fall of Germany and Europe. This booklet will tell you from the Bible what is prophesied for Germany, what is prophesied for Europe, because they will rise suddenly, very quickly, but then they will fall very suddenly and very quickly. Thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.